accounts payable and accrued expenses are issues those who work and manage or have responsibility for the accounts payable function need to understand. But there can be some ambiguities between the two, so we thought we'd take a few minutes to clarify the important inv information everyone needs to understand these two important accounting terms. Make sure you stick around until the end when we have two trick questions for you, one of which I suspect most of you will get. Well, the other one, well, it'll be interesting to see. Accounts payable and accrued expenses are two closely related topics, although in practice they are very different. Both are found on the balance sheet. Both are considered current liabilities, which, as you probably know, means they are due within 12 months. But that's where the similarities end. Let's start out with the definition of accounts payable. Here's how I explained it on a recent YouTube short. Accounts payable has both an accounting finance definition and a functional definition. Let's start with the accounting one. Accounts payable, often referred to as AP, is the amount of a company's total invoices currently waiting to be paid. These can be for either a product or a service and are typically due within 30 days after the receipt of the invoice. However, the payment terms can vary widely depending on what was negotiated and your industry. Accounts payable is considered a current liability on the balance sheet since almost always invoices are due in less than one year. From a functional standpoint, accounts payable refers to the team who gets the company's bills paid. The function is a lot more complicated than I'm making it sound. If you want best practice advice on the over 30 different areas impacting this function, subscribe to this channel now. In that instance, we were talking about the first definition, not the functional definition. This might be obvious to most watching this, but I do not want to confuse those who watch the almost 600 videos we have already posted, with more on the way, two in most weeks, and will continue to post, mostly having to do with the operational side of accounts payable and the insights needed to help professionals on an accounting or accounts payable job interview. Now let's turn our attention to accrued expenses. Accrued expenses are expenses that are incurred but not paid yet. Ultimately, these expenses will increase accounts payable, but until the time, until that time, they are carried under accrued expenses. As most listening to this are very well aware, GAAP, G-A-A-P, accounting requires accruals. But let's dig a little deeper into this. Let's say you issued a purchase order and ordered some goods. The goods have been received and you may or may not have started using them, but that's irrelevant. If you have not received the invoice from the supplier, the amount is included in the accrued expense. Occasionally, and yes, as crazy as this sounds, this does happen, the supplier forgets to invoice the customer. This is referred to as goods received but not invoice. This situation should only exist for a few days, but if they didn't into invoice you, it could go on for a long time. And by the way, the reserve, the reverse also can happen. You receive the invoice before you receive the goods. This really shouldn't happen, but occasionally the goods get sent before the goods. The invoice gets sent before the goods. Hopefully your accounts payable group is doing the three-way match and you catch this. We're going to talk about this. We're not going to talk about this today because it isn't the focus of the talk. But if you are interested in this topic, we did a short talk. We did a short talk on both sides of this topic a while ago, and I'll put a link to it in the description. That's invoiced but not received, or received but not invoiced. Okay. Now back to accrued expenses and accounts payable. If an invoice has been received but has not yet been paid, either because there is a discrepancy or it's not due yet, or perhaps Perhaps you decided to play it late, then it's carried in the accounts payable category. I want to talk a little bit about terminology and accrued expense terminology. Sometimes we are not as precise as we should be in this regard. And I have to be honest, I am as guilty of this as the next person. We'll use the term accruals, but what we really mean when we're in accounts payable is we're really talking about accrued expenses, but we're calling it accruals. If we're just with the accounts payable folks, that is fine. But if you're in a larger meeting with other finance and accounting professionals, realize that accrued expenses are not the only accruals that the organization tracks, or at least most organizations track. On the other side of the balance sheet, there is a similar issue, there is a similar issue when looking at accrued revenue and accounts received both of which are considered current acts. So use of the word accruals might confuse those who are looking at both sides of the equation, and they may think you mean both accrued expenses and accrued revenue. So if you can remember, be precise. 
Now, before we get to the trick questions, which I mentioned in the beginning, um, which may or may not trick you, if you're getting value from this talk, I'd love it if you'd hit the likes or the thumbs up button. It sends a message that you're getting value from this talk and I should make more like it. A personal thanks from me to everyone who has liked this talk. And by the way, while my goal with this, with this video and this talk and then all my others is to make sure everyone goes away with just a little bit more knowledge about whatever the topic of the day is, I also strive to make people feel that they are not alone. They are not the only ones thinking that they have a particular problem. Problem. That's why I really love it when people comment on videos with something as similar, simple as, I have that problem, or that happens to me, or I thought I was the only one, or something along that line. It helps everyone else see that they are not alone. All right, enough about that. Back to accounts payable and accrued expenses and my trick question. Okay, trick question number one. Most of you will probably get this one, but the second trick, quest, trick question is a little trickier. But here we go. When does the amount in accounts payable when does the amount in question move from accrued expenses to accounts payable? Go ahead and pause the, mi the video, take a minute, and let us know what you think in the, in the comments. Answer to trick question number one. As you probably guessed, when the invoice is received. When the invoice is received, the amount is moved from accrued expenses to accounts payable. Now, for the tricky one. Trick question number two. If you notice that accounts payable has increased significantly from one year to the next, what does it mean? Does it mean that the company is probably growing and thus ordered a lot more than in the past, especially if you're talking about raw material or other items used in the manufacturing process, go ahead and pause the video, take a minute and let us know in the comments. You can just write number number two yes or number two no, if you think it's that's what it means. Now, answer to trick question number two. The answer is, drum roll please, maybe it could mean that. You'd have to look at other figures in, on the balance sheet to make that determination. But it could simply mean that the organization has decided to extend payment term. It could also reflect a one-time payment. Some of this may be explained in the footnotes to the financial statements and or the management letter at the beginning. If you heard me talk or watched any many of these vi videos, you will know that I am not an advocate of extending payment terms. Yes, it will improve your cash flow, but it will aggravate your suppliers, and the consequences of that aggravation could far outweigh the small one-time improvement in cash flow. We've mentioned the balance sheet several times during this talk today as both accrued expenses and accounts payable play a role in this important financial debate. And sometimes folks get mixed up between the balance sheet and the income statement. For this reason, we recently did a short tour, we recently did a short talk explaining what each are and the differences. You can watch it right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen and is in the description. Good luck.